What's your actual argument for this happening? Just look at the cultures that have had the most raw animal foods in their products, uh, in their foods, and they're the healthiest. There are people who live in igloos who literally only eat meat and they have terrible health outcomes. They die around 40, 50 years. Heart disease. Where's the evidence of that? There's, ev there's evidence. There's, there's people, who, people, who, people who eat just meat will that be more likely to die of heart disease and it's because of the saturated fat and cholesterol going into their body. So when I was in school there was this little game we would play, it was the gossip game and the teacher would start out by whispering something and the first classmate's ear and then that classmate would turn around to the desk behind them and whisper the same phrase and it would just, that person would tell the person behind them and it just go on till you got to the end and at the very end um, they, re they said aloud the phrase and it would end up always being the whatever the teacher started with would be vastly different from how the phrase ended on the last person after you know 20 or so people whispered it into each other's ears and this was to prove you know how certain ideas certain things will always get misconstrued as it goes down the line you know of people talking and such but um, I'm telling you about this because this is what the vegan community, this is what it reminds me of, how, what they do. And all communities like this do this. They have like a sort of echo chamber where they talk amongst, amongst each other and they'll give themselves facts and they'll repeat these uh, catchphrases. And most people aren't going back and looking for the evidence of whatever it is they are saying. They are just memorizing these little catchphrases. And then so when an odd person comes into the group and doesn't agree with something, they just repeat those catch catchphrases. And so it ends up being a distorted version of the truth. And they may not be lying on purpose, but they sometimes are, you know. And they know that they haven't themselves went and thoroughly investigated this. So what Humane Hancock has said there is that uh, the Inuits, not only are they dying of heart disease, but they live to like 40, 50 years old. So I wanted to see, he said the link was in the description. Let's see, let's go take a look. So as you can see here, it says the lifestyle of the Inuit is rapidly changing towards an increased cardiovascular risk factor profile. Physical activities decline, obesity, widespread reliance on important food increases, and the smoking rates are alarmingly high. Now, this is uh, part of the conclusion, but going back to the beginning of the study, they talk about how um, after World War II, the Inuit started eating, you know, their diet changed a little bit. They started eating Western, uh, more Western foods. And being as this study was done well after, you know, 1945, I could I would just call this null and boy, but that's me, you know, that's me. Because as long, like that already, right there, him saying they exclusively eat meat and they are dying of heart, that's a lie. That's right there is a lie. Because there's so many other factors now. You know, we're not looking at a society who eats exclusively meat anymore. And so this study is saying the evidence that we used to go on, that they, are, they have a very low rate of heart disease. That's probably because, you know, this was before they could keep consensus and they could keep in track, you know, individuals and populations as well as they're doing today. So, and still, and still in these native populations, these people aren't um, always registering at birth and things like that. So they have these ways that they go in and look and kind of uh, statistically, you know, evaluate exactly how this goes. So again, admittedly, they mention how there was a total absence before absence of cardiovascular disease before 1950, which makes sense. In the end, even in the early 60s, there was low rates. And so they had to wait even longer, obviously, to start getting some 
you know, examples of like, and they still, all they have is that they have a comparable risk now to the Westerners, a comparable or even lower. And there's actually a higher rate of strokes from this um, study. So, yeah, I don't know why he would, you know, link this study and act as if it's some kind of proof when it literally just shows that as the diet changes, as you incorporate processed carbs and plant oils, maybe, I don't know if that's what they're eating, but processed foods, the risk of all disease goes up, not just heart disease. So let's also look at him saying, you know, that they died like 40, 50 years old, because that's a wild claim. So law number one was that they're exclusively eating meat and dying of heart disease. Law number two is that I at 40, 50 years old and the link that he supplies says 68 years old. So not only do we have to look at the change in diet, but we have to consider statistics because those can be faulty. And we know that they've used this in the past as well as in this study at getting these numbers. So. Other than the gossip game and just a flat out line, I will leave you with a quote by Mark Twain. There are lies, damn lies, and statistics. What's your actual argument for this happening? Just look at the cultures that have had the most raw animal foods in their products, uh, in their foods, and they're the healthiest. There are people who live in igloos who literally only eat meat, and they have terrible health outcomes. They die around 40, 50 years old.